So the afternoon session kicks off with a partner from Pentagram. He is an eternal optimist, a human rights activist, graphic designer, and photographer. He's devised identities for clients as diverse as Fight and Press, Pink Floyd Records, Saks Fifth Avenue, Lloyd's of London, Shakespeare's Globe. Since 1993, he's been an active member on the advisory board for Witness, the human rights charity set up to encourage ordinary citizens of the world to use video and technology to record abuses where they see them and defend human rights. Please welcome a personal friend and the creative crusader that is Harry Pierce. Nearly two meters tall and nowhere to hide. I just feel kind of... um, thank you. Uh, so this, this is a, a story, essentially. Um, it's a story about technology, about human rights, and about climate change. But beneath that, it's essentially the story about my um, journey and my hope that design can be uh, very much about good things and better things. In fact, it's, it's, a, it's a story about a dream of the, uh, the, uh, the impossibility of indifference. I didn't make that very easy for myself, did I? Um, and it's also about climate change. And at the end of my little piece, I'll be telling you about an extraordinary group of children who are actually bringing governments to account in court uh, to defend their rights. Of a, uh, that, that it's a human right to have a future, and a future that has a stable and uh, healthy climate. So youth is a strong thing, and this is, this is the little village I grew up in, in the west, west country of England, um, a idyllic little place. And um, the reason I put it in is because it's the first time I really began to discover my sense of right and wrong and what became my, my activism. It was a little paradise, but uh, there was a very dark side to it. I'm ashamed to say there's a thing called fox hunting in my country, which is appalling. And as a small child, I used to hear this sound, which was um, very disturbing. In fact, they had no kind of respect for uh, people's property or boundaries, and ever less respect for a fox, which for sport they chased and tore to pieces. And as a small kid, kind of feeling this going on around me and actually witnessing it tearing through my garden, it was profoundly upsetting. And uh, it's kind of never left me. And when I got in my early teenage years, I found out an even worse truth, that the night before uh, the actual fox hunt, that they blocked the holes of the foxes while they're out, so that any chance of outrunning the hunt or outwitting um, the assholes on the back of the horses, they had no chance anyway. Um, so my first little bit of activism was my friends and I used to go out and when we knew a hunt was going to happen, we started digging out the fox holes early the next morning. So there was some, some kind of support and help and, and, and hope that, that the most awful thing wasn't going to happen. So that's kind of where it began for me. And then I, I went to college, went to art college at Canterbury uh, and studied design. And there I discovered the story of this man, which is Stephen Biko, uh, who was murdered in 1977 in Port Elizabeth and um, right in the middle of apartheid, an extraordinary man, a very brave man. But I learned his story through this man, which is Peter Gabriel, and I learned it through uh, a piece of music called Biko that, that Gabriel wrote. And it was the beginning of me understanding that you could have a creative life and, a, and also a life with conscience. And ever since then, I've dreamt of this and hoped that I could build something in, in my career that balanced the two, that I could be... Um, a designer and also a designer with conscience. Um, and eventually, uh, and I haven't got time to go in here, but eventually I got to meet Peter and we became friends. And when I, after a couple of jobs, leaving college, a couple of jobs, I set up my own agency with a couple of other guys and we decided we wanted to play Robin Hood, that we would, the commercial work that we did would fund other projects that we would work on for free for Amnesty International, Greenpeace, Friends of the Earth. Um, and it was a, a really kind of formative time of, of actually beginning to do what I really dreamt I, I, I wanted to do for a long time and, and making design work for good. At the same kind of time, Peter Gabriel was on a tour, it was called Conspiracy of Hope, where a group of artists supporting Amnesty International landed in 11 countries around the world, played concerts um, to raise awareness of Amnesty International and essentially human rights. And on those tours, 
Gabriel carried a Handicam. It was just when the Sony Handicam came out. And for him, it was um, a time when he actually met people who were child soldiers, people who'd witnessed huge atrocities that had been tortured, that had um, had members of their family thrown out of planes uh, in front of them. And the intimacy of those conversations and capturing it on video, he realized that the power of that straightforward moment of someone being able to tell their truth when they would never normally have that opportunity was an amazing thing. And after that, um, he tried to set up this thing which he called Witness, which was a charity to raise funds to get cameras into the hands of oppressed people around the world so they could do exactly that, have a chance to tell their stories. Because I can't imagine it's even worse than suffering like that and then actually having your story buried and denied um, and any possibility of any justice is even further unlikely. Um, and uh, what happened was that no one really wanted to listen to him. And then there was this, uh, there was the Rodney King beating in LA where George Halliday, an ordinary guy on the street on an ordinary camera, caught the police beating the hell out of a, a guy and it brought LA to its knees. And it was the beginning of a, um, a whole kind of moment when ordinary people actually could gather evidence and, and actually have an effect. Uh, and so Witness got born. And I didn't know anything about this then. Um, but we had set up our own little company, and um, I'd been to see Peter, and we talked about working possibly together. Nothing really came of it. And then I got this extraordinary call from a lady in The Hague uh, who said that she worked for the Lawyers Committee for Human Rights, that she was working with Peter Gabriel, that she needed an identity, and she was passing through London on her way back to New York. And Peter had suggested we meet, and we met, and I worked on an identity with her. And she explained that she was the legal arm of this thing called Witness that Gabriel would set up because brilliantly he realized that it's no good just having a piece of film that you, or an archive, you have to be able to bring that to bear to actually create any kind of change. So he linked with lawyers to get this stuff into, into the courts and actually begin to really do something that would actually um, create change. She showed me this little one and a half minute piece of film which I'll show you now. It's very rough, but it just caught the absolute heart and soul of the idea that he had. And it was, uh, uh, I, should, I should actually say that was made by Chiat Day with, with Peter. Um, but it's so rough, but it's so uh, uh, moving. And I, um, I was absolutely not for six by it. And I, and I rang um, Peter and said, uh, if there's anything I can do to help this, it was really fledgling. It was a kind of year old, um, just getting going. And we were talking about it, and he said, well, the idea is that little brother is turning the cameras back on big brother and everything he said um, just seemed like these beautiful pure ideas so I decided and I talked to my other two partners in our agency that we should um, 
or I really wanted to focus, rather than working on uh, doing a little bit for many, I wanted to do a lot for one. So I gave up working for other charities and we work, I worked solely with Witness and I've been doing that for the last 20, 23 years. Um, and really my idea was that you've got the films, you've got the evidence, you've got the, the lawyers, you need the kind of world to surround it to get the film, people to watch the films, to um, have a, a sort of strong graphic storytelling that, that, that captures the moment in these films and try and, and, try and just get more coverage. Um, so I started working on ideas. This was a, a, one of the films about child soldiers. This tends to be one major theme every year where we'd support activists from around the world. Um, and it's, so this was, you know, what's, what's more vulnerable in society than the infants? And same with the army, it's the infantry. Uh, you put those two together, it's a pretty damning thing. Um, sometimes it's about uh, eviction in, in, um, in the East, or they've made extraordinary films um, by women from all over the world. Uh, sometimes I'm just making graphic kind of marks to help try and tell the story of Witness in its most simplest uh, way possible. Um, it's interesting now with the, with the complete erosion of truth, um, however more important this kind of stuff is, that the fight for, for truth that it's upheld by as many of us as possible uh, is ever, ever more in risk, I would say. Sometimes it's just reflections of the, of the films themselves, but sometimes I've learnt, and if there's any young designers here, this is something where I was given, I, I get given all the footage and I have to make a kind of single idea around a, a, a particular story. Um, and this was a story about the, the villages in, in East Timor that were being burnt. Um, and I could have very easily used pictures of, the actual, of actually that. But I figured that it was, if you're burning your villages, you're really burning your own country. Um, and this became a, a, a sort of single image for the story. Now, the way work, Witness works is they, that they, they, they don't make all these films themselves. They help get them made. So they, they have partnerships with activists all over the world. And when I, some of the stuff that I make gets sent out to all these different places, to help populate the, the, uh, the, the kind of narrative of the story. And when this was happening, I don't know if you remember that the, um, the Buddhist monks rose up against the military junta in Burma and they were really brutally, brutally suppressed and there were absolute um, marches and, and, and many, many things all over, the, all over the world. And I got a call from witness saying, turn on the, turn on the TV and they're in streets all across the globe, people were marching, and marching with this poster. And it's really, I just put it in here to say to the other designers that you have no sense sometimes of the trajectory of a simple little idea that you have. It kind of takes on its own life, and it's, um, an idea is a powerful, powerful thing. So with Witness, it's not just about posters, it's about actually working with them. I go and spend time, they're based in Brooklyn, I spend time with them, spend two days at a time working with the, the um, the people there. Uh, we hold um, gatherings where we get um, activists and Peter and funders together and try and help to get them protection, to get their stories out from um, uh, different places. We hold a big event in New York every year which raises enough money to keep Witness going every year. Um, so it's a continual thing. But just like technology, and technology is such a big part of this, and this is why I think it's important for the climate change story and issue, is technology has been constantly changing. So, um, you know, from the handy cam to a small handheld camera to actually cameras in our phones. And now, I think someone mentioned earlier today that there's actually, in Africa, that phones are more available than water in certain places. So it's that everyone on the planet potentially could eventually connect with each other. But the fact that we are now uh, armed like activists, we, you know, we can capture any of this ourselves. And it's interesting that you've got things like this you could count as hardware, you could count this as software. And if you kind of get it everywhere, there's a real possibility that um, human rights really are in our, in our, in our hands. Um, <coughs> now, the, the, the next story is essentially about um, a group of kids in America. I'm sorry, that's rather dark, isn't it? Uh, it's, and it's interesting that this is happening in America, especially with what's going on there right now. Um, that this is, uh, and this is a small little uh, representation of this very large number of kids in many different states right across America who have decided that they have a legal right to a decent um, uh, environment, 
and, and, a, and a, a legal right to a, to a future. So they've actually, with Witness, made 11 films about issues in different states of America, whether that's land erosion, whether it's mining, whether it's poisoning of water. And they've actually um, brought these to bear. Um, so climate change uh, itself is destroying human rights because it is a human right um, to have a future. Um, this is, this is the, the idea that they're, that they're fighting with. And uh, I think I've lost a picture here, but this is, this is, this is the, um, a, a guy in Oregon who has actually fought for the rights to have mining, um, the rights to a local mine reversed and stopped. Um, so, and it's actually gone through and it's actually happened. And they, these kids are amazing. They're actually taking on the government. Um, it's, it's just brilliant to see. This is... Uh, Another extraordinary project. This has actually been funded from here. I've got to try and remember how this goes. By, by, the, by the Dutch postal, Dutch postcode lottery dream fund. <laughs> Snappy little title. Uh, <laughs> but it's an extraordinary um, fund that, that's basically put together 11 different um, organizations from around the world, Witness being one of them, to well, the, the idea is that no tree in the Amazon will ever be felled again without it being recorded. Um, so indigenous people are being taught to fly drones, record films. They, the, the whole canopy of the, of the Amazon is being um, monitored by satellites. And Witness is helping everyone join this all up through media, through um, kind of proper judicial storytelling so that this actually becomes something of, of, of a real power, that the, that the daily life of the, of the forest can be monitored, and if anyone cuts down a tree, they'll be caught on camera. So it's an extraordinary technological thing driven by, by Holland. It's just amazing. So Witness has been going for 25 years. They've reached 60 million people with their videos. They've trained 6,000 filmmakers. Uh, 100,000 supported by their resources. So sometimes it's not just about making films, it's about actually connecting people. They're, they're a kind of conduit um, to getting people to lawyers and into courts. Over 97 countries and over 360 organizations. It's an extraordinary thing. It's quite a quiet thing, actually. Um, and they've actually brought someone down. This is Thomas Lumbanga, um, a Congolese warlord who trained, cajoled, um, saw the death of thousands of child soldiers, um, mass killings, and with witnesses' films that they, that they made with local activists, they actually brought him... Uh, he's actually in jail right now, so it's, it really works. It's an extraordinary thing. And so, I seem to have lost my... <laughs> a few of my slides have gone missing. Never mind. I'm probably... out of three. Perfect. Um, so really, the, 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 the essence of this is that whether it's climate change or human rights, and I think the two of them kind of um, weave into each other, that, um, it, you know, it's, the idea is it really is in our hands, and um, design is a very powerful part of that, and, and I think it's a, a kind of extraordinary tool. tool. This is just a little ending sequence. I'm sure our Climate Council up here are going to have some questions for you, but if I can just start. Can, 
you, you mentioned the whole issue of fake news. Mm. But of course, how do you actually, through witness, deal with fake news? Because presumably, film, these films, which are uh, democratically, as it were, created, could come from anywhere. It could, it could. I, I, nothing's nothing's um, released uh, or taken, taken into, into court or anything like that. Obviously, that hasn't been absolutely mm. verified from every point, point of view. And I'm, uh, I think they've been working with um, Google and a whole series of other people mm. about verifying techniques to, to tell if any films have been tampered with. I mean, you know, you can imagine you could just as easily make a fake film as you could make anything else. So I, I think it's a, very, it's a huge issue for them and, and it's very, very, very judiciously um, dealt with. But and, and you were saying yourself that, you know, you do not see that your role is there to create nice posters for an, for an organisation. You've been working for many years. Obviously, there are some lovely posters. But have you worked out how you define the role of design and you within this organisation? Uh, is, is that I, a difficult I, I question? I see it. I, yeah. I, I, I mean, I, the essential idea is it's not a separate thing to my daily business, but it's yeah. actually part of my design. And sometimes, you, can, you know, I'm in a small team of seven people in my design team, and sometimes there's could be if we're doing an annual report or doing a big yeah. campaign, there could be two or three people working for weeks and weeks on this for free. We've not, I mean, this has been pro bono forever. Um, but it's mainly as a support system. So the things I didn't show are all the things that go on behind the scenes that aren't very visually interesting. But we are constantly making things, helping them with things. We, we, we are the um, kind of idea behind the gala every year. And it's just a gentle little thing that constantly goes on as a, as a form of support. And I think for me, it's just that. It's a notion of balance, and you know, it's. Uh, so yeah. here we are. We're talking about the climate council, and indeed, can over to our climate council. Oh, yeah, all the cards going yeah, up. Okay. Okay. I was just thinking, and um, also related to the question that you asked, um, we are seeing that there is this increment on social media. Now everybody has access to social media technology, so there are more and more videos. Everybody has opportunity to share their stories share injustices, but it also generates an overflow of videos. So, mm. of course, in that overflow of videos, you also have the fake videos. So Absolutely. my question is, how do we overcome this like, post-factual society that we're living now? How can we go and, and not, not become resilient to all these videos? Because the more you have, then you've stopped looking at some of these videos, right? You do, videos, you right? do. Absolutely. And got, how do yeah. you also say, yeah. how do you say, okay, this is true, this is not. Yeah. I mean, I guess that most of the people here, we can say this is not true, or we, can, or we will go and search for more f sources, but the average Joe out there, what, what would you say is the right way to go about it? Or sure. one way I, to go about it? Yeah, I, I, I think, I mean, God, since I've been speaking, how many million videos have been made across the planet? It's yeah. just relentless, and, and ever more so, and I think, I think you do get jaundice, and people turn off, and it gets ever more shocking to try and break through that kind of um, uh, barrier, you know, just to get any kind of attention. But I think the idea of witness is that it's, um, it, is a, it is a kind of filter for the things that can, they filter out the stuff that can really go forward and actually be used to make a change. So I don't, I, th I think there's no possibility that this stuff is, that they or anyone else can really stop the flow of this stuff. That's just going to happen. Yeah. It's just about the good stuff getting to the place where it needs to be to actually have a, a chance of change. Can, can How I, you stop I, it, I have... I, I was just going to ask you, Harry, yeah. do you think there's actually in your role there, you, I mean, there is a bit of sort of core design activity around mm. brand and trust. It's, in, it's entirely about trust, yeah. Um, yeah. Because presumably, in part, yeah. what you're doing is creating a place where well, information is validated. Yeah. I, and I, th I, think, I think really great design of whatever, whatever nature that is, that it has to have an essential truth. Uh, design that isn't based on a truth, that, that's a fabrication, that's a, that's a veneer, and you can see that a lot in my world, identities that, that are created that are actually veneer for something that's actually a very, not a particularly well-founded product or a company or anything, yeah. kind of works for a while, but it eventually gets seen through. And I think, yeah. I think this is a, a real example of actually design born out of, hopefully out of truth. And I, and I, I do see that's a huge role for design, to, to be, as I said at the, mini, at the beginning, the, the notion that, um, that, that this is, you know, I, I, I try and work by the hope that design is about doing good. Uh, and um, as, as, a, as a primary 
prerequisite, pre prerequisite for doing anything in design. Yeah. You have one quick question. To it's a personal one. In the end, if you have to choose, would you define yourself as a uh, activist or a creative? Uh, can I say week. creative activist? No. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's a good that's a good response. <laughs> I wish I. Um, I don't want to be torn like that. I would. Uh, someone asked me the day if I was a photographer or designer. I don't know. I just do the stuff. Uh, I I don't want to draw lines. I I try okay, and be both. I try and be, forgive me. I didn't give you the right answer, but I don't think I have one. <laughs> So, creative activist, photographer, and Fool. many, many, <laughs> many things. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very thank much. Thank you to our climate council. Thank you, Harry. <laughs> <laughs>